Hello everyone. Welcome to Microsoft Power Automate tutorials. Today we will learn about the expressions in basic. All right. Whenever we are working with flows in Power Automate, we are passing the data from one connected to another by adding a trigger and action with dynamic content. But sometimes we need to do more like a calculation or to transfer data from one data type to another for the data. In that case, we are going to use expressions. What is expression? In Power Automate, expressions are a set of simple functions that enable you to return data. Or expressions can be perform specific actions or set of actions in flows where user can do basic operations like getting the current time, adding numbers together, or replacing a part of a string of text and many more. Where we'll find these expressions in flows? If you see over here, I'm having a trigger and action. This is the manually trigger a flow. And I'm having an action over here by using compose. And you can see over here, dynamic content. There you will find dynamic content. In all our previous sessions, we have used this dynamic content to get the inputs over here, right? You can see over here, these are all the inputs that what we have from the manually trigger flow, right? If you want to do some kind of actions on the data, in that case, you are going to use expression over here. You can see over here, there are a lot of expressions that we have to perform the specific set of actions. All right. Once again, what is the expression? Expressions are a set of simple functions that enable you to return data. And there are different types of functions are available in Power Automate. There are totally 10 different categories we have for the different types of functions. One is string function, collection functions, logical functions, conversion functions, math functions, date and time functions, referring functions, workflow functions, URI parsing, and manipulation functions. They are the 10 different categories of functions that what we have inside the Power Automate. Now, let me explain you one by one about these functions. First, let me start with string functions. String functions, we'll also call it as text functions, which are used to modify strings, and also we'll use the same string functions to find the characters in a string or format strings and many more. The string function will be used to manipulate the text when you are trying to do better format or modifying data you receive from one connector to another connector. All right, if you see an example over here, I'm having concat text one comma text two. In a simple words, if I'm having first name and the last name, I want to concatenate these two things and then I have to display it as full name. Let's assume I'm having the first name as Amir and the last name as Basha. In that case, I want to get the full name by concatenating these two strings by using the function called concat. You can see over here concat text one comma text two. What it will give? It will give the output as Amir Basha. This is the string function that what we have. All right. The second one, collection functions. Collection functions are used for arrays and strings. If you see over here, I'm, I want to find the length of this sentence. In that case, I have given an example over here as length power automate is the best for RPA. To find the length of this sentence, I will I'm going to use this power automated the best for RPA in the particular strings, right? In that case, I want to know the length of the string. In that case, I'm going to use length of string or length of text. In that case, we are going to use collection function. These collection functions may be used to check if an array is empty or not, or to grab the first or the last item from the array, or even we can use joins, unions, and intersection operations. This is about the collection function. Now, we'll talk about the logical function. Logical functions are used to work with conditions like if-else conditions, 
and also to compare the values and to do another logical basic evaluations. If you see over here, I'm having an example over here. That is the values that I'm having two values over here. That is 12 comma 10. If 12 is greater than 10, in that case, I want to give it. I want to give the output as yes. If it is less than 10, in that case, I'm going to give it as no. Right? In that case, how we are going to get it? I'm going to use the function greater. And also, I'm going to use the logical function over here. That is, if condition that I'm going to use it over here to get the values over here. This is the logical function that I have used to compare the both the values. That is 12 comma 10. And based on that, I'm going to get the output. This is where we are going to use logical functions. Now, we'll talk about the conversion functions. Conversion functions are used to convert the data type from one data type to another. For instance, suppose I'm having the value over here. If you see the example, I'm having the value 12, but it is actually in the double quotes. Nothing but the value is string data type. And then I want to convert this value string to another data type that is integer. Then in that case, I'm going to use int of the string value that what we have given in the numbers, right? In that case, what it will do, it will convert the value from one data type to another. In that case, we are going to use conversion functions. This can be a simple things like converting a text number into an integer or more complex functions like changing the encoding of a file from base list for to binary. In that case, we are going to use conversion functions. Now we'll talk about the math functions. Math functions allows to add or subtract or multiply and perform similar functions on numbers or any other kind of mathematical operations. In addition, math functions allows you to find the smallest and the largest numbers of several numbers or to get a random number among these numbers. All right. In that case, we'll use math functions. Now we'll talk about the date and time functions. These date and time functions are used to return the current date and time or the change time zones and the specified information about the date and time or to do the other date time manipulations. In that case, we'll use date and time function. If you see over here, I'm having an example convert from UTC that is UTC now and then UTC now is nothing but we'll get the date and time over here and I want to convert into Eastern Standard Time and you can see the format over here that is DD MM YYY format and you can see hours minutes and seconds that we have this is the standard Eastern Standard Time that we have used by using date time functions now referencing functions these referring functions are used to work with the outputs of the actions and the triggers. Now, if you see over here, I'm having some inputs over here from the manually triggery flow. In that case, I'm having the actions over here. If you want to work on the outputs of the actions and triggers, in that case, you're going to use referencing functions. All right, now we'll talk about workflow functions. Workflow functions are used to retrieve the information about your flow and are closely related to the referencing of the functions. One of the functions is called workflow. If you see one of the example over here, I'm having workflow dot run dot ID. I want to know the ID which currently the flow is running that ID. I want to know in that case, I'm going to use workflow functions. All right. Now URI parsing functions. These functions are used to dissect a URI that is passed in as string. You must use these functions to find the host or the path or the query and or the other portions of the URI. In that case, you are going to use URI parsing functions. If you see an example over here, I'm having URI query that is inside that I'm having the URL with the HTTPS flow.microsoft.com slash fake URL question mark test equal to yes. In that case, if you want to know the particular path or the query string, in that case, you are going to use URI parsing functions. All right. Now, finally, we'll have manipulation functions. Manipulation functions are used to work with specific objects in your flow. 
you can do things such as find the first non blank value or work with properties or to find the export matches in that case you are going to use manipulation functions these functions are typically in json or xml nodes evaluation purpose you are going to use manipulation functions these are all the 10 different categories of the function which are available in expressions in the upcoming sessions i will explain you how to work with these functions in detail thank you for watching power automate tutorials if you have any queries related to this concept please post them in the comment section i will see you in the next session till then bye bye have a wonderful day